Hey guys, welcome back to Kuma Style Reviews, and as promised, we've got the breakdown or showdown between the Bandai Tamashi, Soul of Jigoken GX71, Voltron or Goline, whatever you want to call it. It just the only difference in terms of toy is if you have the sleeve on or off the box, and the nameplate on there, which is changeable. And we've got the third party unlicensed Titan Power. Titan King, King of Beast, which is a newer one. Of course, this is a re-release. So the categories that we're gonna do, seven of them, to make sure that there's not a tie, possible tie, anything like that. We've got size, aesthetic or design, build, and we'll go quality and stuff like that, throw that in there too. Articulation, accessories, gimmicks, and value for the dollar. Of course, I'm going to try to use facts, so I'm going to say the Solar Shigogan has, let's say, 30 accessories versus 10 on the Titan King of Beast, you know, that kind of thing. But when it comes to my scoring and things like that, of course, it's going to be my opinion. It's subjective. So don't take it as me telling you what to buy, because honestly, I could care. I could not care any less about what you in particular buy or where you buy it from. My goal with this channel is to just give you guys a good look at products and make sure that when you buy it, wherever you buy it from, you're making a smart decision. So I'm not going to say in my opinion, every other sins and things like that, but please know that it's it's understood that it's my opinion and it also shows that you've watched the first couple of minutes of this video and heard what I've just had to say. But anyway, getting started here with size. Pretty black and white. 12 inches on the Titan Power King of Beast. And then we've got just over 11, I'd say 11 and an eighth. I'm sorry, those are dog tags jingling. In fact, I'm gonna take them off right now for the sake of this review. So 11 and an eighth on the Soul of Chigokin. Obviously, the Titan Power is bigger, so I have to give this one to the Titan Power. And just so you guys know, trying to do the score overlay thing here, so if you guys don't really like it, it's my first attempt at it, but gonna do the best I can. But so far, Titan Power one, Soul of Chigokin Zero. All right, and now we're gonna take a look at the aesthetic or design of each of these, getting the Soul of Chigokin out of the way for a second, putting the Titan Power on a turnstile, just giving you guys a roundabout here. Right, so you can see the front. And you can see with the Titan Power, it's a very stylized version of Voltron, Goliath, whatever you want to call them. I like it quite a bit. It really falls in line with the super robot style that I like. You've got the really, I guess, pronounced proportions on, I guess, the ends of extremities, kind of how things go from thin to thick, thin to thick, thin to thick just to give it that kind of coming at you proportion i love that stuff and quite a few popular super robots do it not going to get into that but it's it's cool i like it i like the paneling all through and something that needs to be said for this particular design it was originally come up with by designer kwan jun park he did this statues this company took that statue design whether they took it stole it whatever they made a fully articulated, die-cast, LED having figure out of it, so I don't want it to be put out there like Titan Power came up with this. Kwan Jun Park, he's the one that deserves the credit for this. Now getting this out of the way, I'm gonna put the Soul of Chigokin up. I'm gonna move this a little bit more towards the center. I'm giving you guys a roundabout here. It's a really refined look, and I'll say off the bat, I like that. Things like the joints are hidden. It's just very clean looking. Even though this is the one that actually transforms, combines, you know, all of that stuff. So it has a lot more parts to it, but manages to look, like I said, more clean when put together. So there's that. And we'll get them back next to each other. Put the turn stable, turn style down 
And now that we've got them both side by side, I will say, on paper, literal paper, the Titan Power would win it all day for me. It just has that manga-esque styling, like I said, with the proportions and things like that, that I just love. It's something that attracts me towards a lot of Super Robots in general. It's a really nice, mean, fun design. Kwanju Park, he knocked it out of the park, no pun intended, with that one. However, the Soul of Chigokin, even though it doesn't attract me right off the bat, as much as the Titan powered version does, I have to give it to this one. Because not only does it have some really streamlined proportions to it, like you see the thin waist up to the more broad shoulders and things like that, and overall it's just a nice proportionate look. Not really my styling, but the presentation of it is great. To see that really refined homage to both the toy and cartoon at the same time, on top of, and this isn't even something that I normally dig, but the chrome on the legs and whatnot, not only is the design good, but I think it's better presented than the Titan Power. If the Titan Power had that more refined look with some of the, I guess, finer paints used, like the chrome and whatnot, I would give it the edge here, but it's one of those things to where, yes, I feel like the Solich Goken is a bit of a more weak design on paper, but it's not bad. This is comparing like really good to really good preference to not something that's not necessarily my preference, but I think the one that nobody can argue with is that the fit and finish of this one the Soul of Shigokin is above and beyond compared to the Titan Power. So just looking at both of them, which looks more like a premium figure, because that has to be taken into account too, because even though there's a price difference between the two of them, one's 150, one's 300, they're both considered high-end figures, and you're probably going to put them on a more high-end shelf rather than just next to some Hasbro whatever, Transformers Siege of Cybertron or whatever, whatever that stuff's called. I don't even know. But yeah, so that does have to be taken into account, and that's why I give the Soul of Chigokin the edge. So, aesthetic, design, I'm actually going to give it to the Soul of Chigokin. So right now, I've got one one. The next is build, which is the literal construction of these items, and, you know, I consider materials used as well. So both of these are die-cast figures, mostly die-cast throughout the joints and whatnot, some die-cast on the outer shells of them. I believe the Soul of Shigokin has more die cast on the outside, but when it comes down to it, fit and finish, again, just night and day with the Soul of Shigokin. Even though both are good, both have well done sturdy joints, I feel like just between things like paint, I look at how hard it is to access the batteries. On the Titan Power, and you can look at the reviews of both of these to get those minor details and things like that. Links will be in the description. But this one is just plain put together in a more user friendly manner. And even with things like, okay, so the wrists on mine, I guess all of the first production run of the Titan Power came on backwards, so it had no wrist articulation until you open it up, fix it, and things like that. The Solar Shigokin, I'm sure that there are reports of quality control issues, but it's not a, the complete first run or second run or third run. This batch had this particular problem right out of the factory because they built it wrong or painted it wrong or this or that. Because there's no toy that I've ever seen with just plain perfect QC across the board. But at the same time, it's not a if you buy this, it's gonna come like this, and better have your tools ready kind of thing, you know? And also, there's nothing about the Soul Shigokin to where you literally have to mar the toy to gain access to it, you know? And I look at that, part of, I got some marring on here, around here, on the Titan Power, 
just because of battery access and those pieces having soft plastics and whatnot. So I think overall on the Solish Gokin, one thing that Bandai does consistently on all of their products, they use top-notch plastics, man. It, you know, until you really get to that high-end point, if you're collecting a lot of retail figures or whatever, it doesn't matter because you're going to get a lot of cheaper plastics, hollow parts, and stuff like that in general. But it really starts to stand out when you start spending real money, quote unquote, it's not like you're spending fake money, but on some of these higher end products because it's night and day and it really ticks you off when you get stuff that's kind of inferior, junky, whatever, you know? So hands down, Soul of Shigokin. Right now I've got it two to one, Bandai. So in terms of articulation, just off the bat, I th think it's pretty undeniable that it's gonna go to the Titan Power. The Titan Power, it's made and a big selling point is that more extreme articulation. So there are things that it does that the Solo Jigokin just can't do. And again, not saying the Solo Jigokin is bad. It's like a really good to great comparison here. So by all means, I love them both. But you got things like the butterflying joints, the really extended outward swing. Um, elbows only go to about 90, but that's the same on the Solo Jigokin. But then you've got things like these big, huge honking legs with the crazy leg articulation, pretty extreme ankle tilt and whatnot. They both have ab crunch, and I, neither of them really have much. But with things like drop hips for that further outward swing or forward and backward swing and whatnot. Skirts that move on all sides. Yeah, the articulation and space for said articulation is undeniably more on the Titan Power. And again, Solus Yugokin, really not bad. And one of the most articulated, get that out of the way, Solus Yugokins to date. And if you look, he even has further ab crunch than the Titan Power. But if you look at things like the outward kick, right? Outward kick on the Solo Shigokin. That's the Titan Power. I mean, again, it's one of those pieces on the Titan Power. That's what it's made for. That's what it's marketed as. It's that big, extreme, quote unquote, toy. It's very fun as well. So articulation, no contest. I'm giving it to the Titan Power and that ties them up actually, two and two. All right, and now we're taking a look at the accessories. If it was just down to presentation, man, oh man, the soul of Shigokin would win by a country mile. So you've got this awesome like staircase with all of the weapons for the individual lions. And we'll get into that in the next section, actually. As well as the sword, the dual blades, handle for the shield. And then you've got this tray of individual weapons for the lions. More of them. An alternate face. As well as the spinning, spinning blade, I believe it's called. So it's pretty cool stuff. And then on the Titan Power, you got the blades and sword, you got the double blades, you've got the spinning blade, which is, it's a knockoff actually of the Soul of Jigoku one. All right, I'll show you that, zoom out dual daggers, and then this contraption to hold both the blade and the shield on its back, which is incredibly intuitive and looks so cool. But one thing that I want to note, this was creative. Even though the shield shape itself is a knockoff of the Soul of Jigokin, a lot of people don't know it's a spinning blade because the, the toys, they never spin. This, it implements a different kind of handle that sticks in here, so it actually spins. That's huge. 
And that's really, really freaking cool. So I like that they did that. And also on the Titan Power, as stated, they have this handy dandy clip. Goes into his back. Stick the sword on. Making it look a lot harder than it really is, but doing it from an angle. Maybe I've got it upside down. I don't know. There we go. Just had to find the sweet spot. There's that. Stick the shield on. And boom. All right, so we're gonna bring the camera down. Right there. Turn it around. Gonna get the Soul Shigokun weapons out of the way. Because we're not showing the weapons in hand or anything. There are plenty of pictures of that on the individual galleries for each one. Links will be in the description. But I mean, come on, it looks so awesome. With that sword and shield on its back. I really like that look. That's really creative. Alright, so I will say this. I was originally going to give it to the Titan Power. Because I really like that back attachment. I like the spinning shield. The implementation of the accessories, I think, is still better on the Titan Power. But, one thing that I had forgotten about until I actually pulled out the tray is that even though it doesn't have like a back adapter, even though the spinning blade doesn't spin, it has not only more weapons, including the weapons for the individual lines, which I don't know if that counts or doesn't count, but even one to one, it has that extra facial expression as well. So I'm actually gonna change my original decision and give it to the Soul of Jigokin Voltron, and that makes this currently, I believe, three to two. Pretty cool. And now we're taking a look at gimmicks between the two of them. The Solar Goken really doesn't have a lot in terms of gimmicks, but it includes a huge one, and that's the fact that it does transform. I know that in general is something that's really important to a good number of consumers, like hey, I had this transforming toy as a kid, or hey, it transformed in the show, so you know what? I want this to transform, and there's nothing wrong with that opinion. There are people like myself who is okay with it not transforming, but this is really, really well done. Whether you need it or not in a toy, you're gonna love it. Five fully articulated lines. They all have the same articulation points for the most part, so just taking a look. Even at this one, full on ab crunch. You've got shoulders that go around, full articulation in the knees and whatnot. Paws that not only go back and forth, but side to side. I mean, this one is straight up in a sitting pose here. You know, you've got accessories for all of them. Go right inside of the mouth. Like so, you have the weapons that go, you know, on the tops and sides of their shoulders and whatnot, shoulder size, you know. I don't know what they're really considered on quadruped animals, so they're kind of all the same. But yeah, I mean, it's just really, really cool stuff. They look great. Full articulation, not a details left out, even the weapons inside of the mouse, which you can see on the red line there. It's great stuff. I mean, I don't see how anybody couldn't love that aspect of the Soul of Jigokin. Now the Titan Power, the biggest thing is the LEDs. I have them on. It looks like the yellow line is already starting to dim. I'll turn off the lights so you can kind of see them. The lights for the Eyes, unfortunately, the headlights are out on mine. 
I didn't realize it until I tried to turn them on just now. But, I mean, they're pretty bright. They look good. Let me turn off those lights on the shelves, too. I mean, they do decent for what they're worth. Now, if you looked at my original review, which included how to change out the batteries, they're really hard to get to. The feet lines, I can't even access one of the screws on the yellow line, so I can't get to that one. And then when it comes to actually getting out the battery compartments, replacing the batteries, just an example of the head, which I just did now, and there are these weird 337 batteries that I've never seen on any product ever, toy or non. I had to drill a hole in the back just to be able to push the batteries through the front end because they're so tight. So just plain ridiculous, uh, really, really shoddy stuff from the Titan Power team. Just plain inaccessible, it's stupid. So not only are the is the gimmick on the Soul of Chigokin better, but it's much better done as well. So Soul of Chigokin by a landside and right now I've got it five to two, Soul of Chigokin. Okay, so apologies for my last score. It's actually four to two for the Soul of Chigokin. Alright, and I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit while we get into our last topic which is value for the dollar so of course this is completely subjective and the things that you look for in a figure of course are what you look for in a figure and there's no right or wrong to it so you know look over what each of them does watch the reviews not just mine but multiple reviews so you get multiple perspectives and choose what's best for you but for me looking at the price of each of them right so we've got the titan power king of beasts 150 versus the Bandai Soul of Chigokin, 300. And I'm going MSRP, not this company in this country has it priced at this ship versus what? MSRP, ship price, pretty universal. 150 versus 300. Doesn't matter where you found it for, whatever, that's what it's originally priced at, okay? So. I'm gonna give it to the Soul of Chigokin. Not to say that the Titan Power is a bad value at the dollar because it's absolutely not. And again, it's another one to where it's, this is a really good value for 150. You get a huge die cast, highly articulated piece with a neat design, really cool implementation of the weapons, does some things that, you know, no Voltron figure that I've seen so far has done, like the spinning of the spinning blade and whatnot has the LEDs, whether they're easy to access, kind of weird battery types or not, it has that gimmick at least, you know, obviously when it comes to changing the batteries, you're going to have to change them at some point and it's just going to suck to do. But on the other hand, the Solo Chigokin, yeah, it's double the price, but I think you get more than double the value in the fact that, you know, this is 12 inches. So, and that's another thing. You see these two standing next to each other. This thing is just plain huge, which is great but this is also a big toy and being over 11 inches tall in itself they're both very large so don't think that the soul of shigokin is small by any means but it has the transforming aspect it has all of those accessories it has that just beautiful fit and finish and you're looking at this man even right now you can see i'm looking through the lens just the way the light is like gleaming off of the chrome on this thing it's beautiful. It's a centerpiece. It's something that people who don't necessarily collect are going to be able to look at and say like, wow, man, how much did that cost you? That thing is beautiful. You can see the value in it. It just permeates from this piece. I think it is the definitive Voltron or Go Lion collectible, period. It's one of those ones to where it's very accessible. Bandai and Bluefin especially did a great job of making this available everywhere for months on end for people who wanted to pre-order that missed out on the first one, which went by like a flash once people got onto it. You know, even though it's accessible and not necessarily rare, it's one of those ones that 
know, you own it and you're part of an elite club because it's such a great figure. It's the Voltron to own. So value for the dollar, definitely the Soul of Shigokan Voltron. And overall, the winner, Soul of Shigokan Voltron by a landslide, 7 to 2. Again, all of these are my opinion. But based on things that are actually existed, this is the price. This is how many accessories this comes with. This is what this one does. This is what that one does. You may look at these facts and come to a completely different opinion or preference of your own. And again, that's not wrong. But this is my video. You know, talk about it on your video, whatever you think. Or leave what you think in the comments and stuff like that. Just be respectful to each other. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll get a gallery up of both of these things, some side by side stuff on kumastyle.com. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.